Delicious! The most gangster politician ever. Let's go. Let me know if this was too loud. It was really good. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go. I gotta tell the internet about the guy I named you after, okay? You gotta go hang out with mom now. Wait, he named his kid right. after this guy? Most politician in American history, ladies and gentlemen, Cassius Marcellus Clay, aka the Lion of Whitehall. Whitehall being his family home that he grew up in in Kentucky okay. as the son of one of the richest slave owners in all of America. While going to college at Yale to become a lawyer, he would attend a speech from a famous abolitionist by the name of William Lloyd Garrison, and that speech would change the entire trajectory of Cassius Clay's life as well as American history. It is at that moment that Cassius Clay hmm. decided he was not only going to be quietly opposed to slavery, but that he was actually quietly going to fight opposed. against it. He would be set down the path to become the most influential abolitionist of all time. Let's freaking go. Hold on. Sorry for bothering the video. Real quick, this video is brought to you by the biggest sponsor of the channel and my favorite sporting goods for Shields. They've got over 30 retail I honestly love that ad intro. It's like, oh shit, I forgot to actually shill. my code, you're going to get free shipping. They've got everything you can imagine there. Shields. It's where I got this backpack. All of it was on sale. It was a great deal. Again, use my code down below. You're going to get free shipping. Back to the video. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I forgot to mention I've never heard of this. original name was Cassius Clay. Yeah, he was actually named after this guy too. Anyways, back to the video. Bye-bye. If you don't know at this point in time, there's basically two different camps you could fall into for being anti-slavery. You could be an abolitionist or an emancipationist. An emancipationist is somebody that wants to vote it out over time over the next 5, 10, 20 years. Okay. An abolitionist, which is somebody that believes we need to end slavery right now and they're willing to fight about it. And in the case of Cassius Interesting. Clay, he was willing to fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. You see, Cassius Clay wasn't just some nobody punk kid that went off oh. to college and decided that he didn't like slavery. This was the son of one of the I never knew that slave owners in all there's America. a difference so between people that are against it. Anti-slavery views was a so huge that's deal and cool. it pissed off a lot of people. So, being that this was the 1820s, what do you do when you're pissed off? You challenge somebody to a duel. So, needless to say, the young Cassius Clay found himself partaking in an awful lot of duels. <laughs> an awful never, lot of duels! Lost. So, obviously, he's pretty Yo, good at it. Yo, badass! Find something you're pretty good at. You want to keep doing it, right? Right. So, Cassius Clay starts challenging anyone and everyone what? to a duel that dares to oppose him. It became common knowledge in his community that Cassius Clay God would damn. fight the wind if it blew from the West and he wanted it to blow for the <laughs> This man went on a duel <laughs> rampage so, so much so by the time he graduated college, he was considered to be the deadliest duelist oh. in all of North America. This guy See, this is what I mean by storytelling. Like, he adds simple, if, simple uh, stuff on top of the video to enhance the point and to make it better. Like, damn, this is so freaking good. <laughs> And I feel like a lot more creators need to kind of learn from this because this is like, it it delivers the point, right? It makes you laugh at the absurdity of what he chose. This guy was putting slave owners in the dirt like he was Johnny Appleseed planting fucking trees. He became known as a <laughs> Johnny deadly Appleseed. of all time. So he graduates from college, goes back home as a lawyer. Shortly after that, his father... Is it abolishment if you just murder everyone who opposes you? <laughs> I'm like... Hmm. Hmm. So all I need to get my point across is just murder anyone that's against me by the lawful system of the dueling. Passes away and leaves everything. So that's pretty badass, Clay. honestly. Cassius Clay immediately frees all of his father's slaves, costing himself forty thousand dollars, which is roughly two million dollars today. And then he Wowee. even gives some of the slaves land and money on top of it. Absolutely infuriating the pro-slavery people in Kentucky. Oh yeah, so that would infuriate a lot of people. Hates your guts. You run for public office, and that's exactly what Cassius Clay did. He served in the Kentucky State Legislature from eighteen thirty-five to eighteen forty-one. <laughs> Wait, when people hate your guts, you run for public office? How does that work? and then finally lost his re-election, to which the pro-slavery crowd breathed a huge uh -huh. sigh of relief because they finally defeated Cassius Clay, or so they thought. Clay immediately starts traveling the country, giving amazing anti-slavery speeches, winning over hearts and minds, and this oh boy. absolutely infuriates the pro-slavery people because they don't know how to stop him. You can't legally <laughs> stop a guy from talking to people that want to listen to him, and they I mean, you could assassinate him. Clay in a duel because he's the best duelist on earth. What do you do? You've got to illegally kill him. The problem with that is... <laughs> They can't illegally find kill a him. man that's dumb enough to think that they can take out Cassius Clay, so they have to go to the one crevice Damn. of the planet. Where Those they can snipers find back then. Truly insane enough to think that they can do this job. And that man's name was Sam Brown, wait, an assassin wait. from New Orleans. Wait, they can't like get someone drunk enough to go for it? 
Well, I guess they wouldn't get the job done. Yeah, never mind, King never King mind, King carry King on. Russell Cave, Kentucky. Cassius Clay's finishing up one of his world-famous speeches as he pulls out a burlap sack, he reaches into the sack and pulls out a holy Bible and says, for those of you that believe in the laws of God, I make to you this argument against Bulgaria, slavery. Bulgaria, we buy the, the vote. The <laughs> reaches back in the sack, pulls out a copy of the U.S. Felt, Constitution, dude. and says, for those of you that believe in the laws of man, I present to you this argument against slavery, sets the Constitution down on the table, drops a burlap sack to the ground and says, for those of you that believe in neither the laws of God or man, I make to you this argument against slavery as he pulls out both of his pistols and sets them on the table which i think we can all agree is gangster as fuck and at this moment that is gangster as fuck look damn it, it, it's like well you have two options either you uh, go with my choice or you uh, go with the gun in the casket what's your choice <laughs> And Sam Brown Pretty comes up on stage and shoots Cassius Clay point blank in the chest. Luckily, Cassius Clay never leaves home without his trusted Bowie knife, which resides inside of a metal sheath. And that metal sheath would catch Sam Brown's bullet, saving Cassius Clay's life. At which point, Cassius Clay would draw his Bowie Jesus. knife and charge Sam Brown. Six of Sam Brown's friends in the audience tried to stop Cassius Clay. He would fight his way through all six of them, making Damn. his way to Sam Brown, promptly stabbing him in the chest, and then turning him into a Mr. Potato Head by cutting off his nose, <laughs> lopping off his ear and gouging out one of his eyes then the that is extremely detailed graphic and holy moly first of all the lack of the guy to like get hit in a metal sheath uh second of all why only one ear i have questions Six men recovered and were able to peel Clay off of him. Not knowing what to do, knowing they couldn't stop Cassius Clay forever, they panicked, probably for fear that Cassius Clay was going to start shoving this guy's facial features up his ass next. They did the only thing they could come up with to get the two apart. They picked up their friend Sam Brown, threw him over a seven foot high stone wall. He fell down an embankment and into a creek bed to finally get Cassius Clay away from him. Somehow, Sam Brown survived, but not only was he lucky for that, what? he was also dumb as fuck because he then decided to take Cassius Clay to court because because apparently after Cassius Clay stabbed him the first time, they were even on the whole- What? Wait, 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 wait. So the guy gets stabbed, gets his nose chopped off, his ear chopped off, is flung across the freaking wall, and survives. So, okay. Whole assassination attempt thing. So Cassius Clay should go to prison for mayhem. So Cassius Clay calls upon his older cousin, one of the best lawyers on the planet that had never lost an open court with over 40 years of experience. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> the guy is literally the best duelist out there. He's the most gangster dude and he has ties to the best lawyer. This, this is literally how fiction is written. Henry Clay. Henry Clay goes into court and his entire defense for his cousin is, and I quote, Your Honor, this is just standard behavior for a Kentuckian. And the judge is just like, you're innocent. <laughs> My God, what is that defense, man? It's just like, this is the, uh, the run of the mill over here, your your honor. With the winner's right history, for real. Free to go, that's it. Best court case ever. Literally walks but in and just goes, I thought this was America, huh? This <laughs> So after Cassius Clay was found oh innocent, Henry Clay decides that he's going to run for president, and Cassius is going to help him campaign. I Cassius love the, the country, giving speeches, saying, "Hey, the you know, I'm to the cousin. story." Who's rule with that? Henry Clay told him he's only allowed to tour the northern states because he's actually <laughs> legitimately concerned that if he sends Cassius to the south, he's going to shoot so many fucking slave owners and duels that it could be considered voter fraud. So Henry Clay ends up losing the presidential fraud. election, and Cassius moves on to his next life adventure, which is becoming an author and writing anti-slavery news articles. Oh. 
Oh, he's not God. The newspaper's were willing to publish him, so he says, fuck you, I'll start my own newspaper, The True American. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, starting an anti slavery newspaper in fucking Kentucky in 1845 was not very popular, and his business would receive death threats pretty much every day, some of Damn. which were written in blood. So Cassius Clay, in true Cassius Clay fashion, says, fuck it, I guess I'm going about it. He then proceeds to up armor his entire business and his printing office. He covers the entire front of the office in a large iron uh -huh. sheet. He installs several cannons down corridors, stocks the entire thing with loaded guns, and rigs it to explode. Here's the thing, Ex he also- Excuse you? Cannons and rigs it to explode? Huh? <laughs> what? That's insane! So doesn't expect his employees to fight to the death for him, so he installs an escape hatch and instructs them to escape if anything goes down, because he's gonna fight the entire mob by himself. How's he gonna do that? As soon as you walk in the only door to get into that printing office, you find yourself in a long, narrow corridor with iron on each side. Jesus just Christ! Just for a single man to get through. Cassius Clay is gonna stand in that narrow corridor and fight the entire mob one man at a time. Literally the mentality that of the is... problem, take a number, I'll kill you in a minute. This man <laughs> if you have a problem, take a number, I'll kill you in a minute. Oh my god, good gracious. That man is first of all a genius, second of all, pretty psycho. Like he, he wasn't kidding when he said that, you know, the guy being good at dueling, what's he gonna do? Just just do more of the same? Jesus Christ, welcome to America in 1845. Yo, I, I'm starting to get the Wild West meaning a bit better with this. Like, Shit was wild. The entire battle of fucking Thermopylae with 300 Spartans, except he's going to do it all by himself. If you think fucking with John Wick's dog is a bad idea, the last thing you want to do is fuck with Cassius Clay. I love the references. Because this man is determined to defend the freedom of speech with the right to bear arms at any cost. Obviously, this escalates to Cassius Jesus. Clay defeating an entire mob single-handedly, right? Wrong. The mob, being full of, you know, super brave pro-slavery men who <laughs> know they're doing the right thing, do the honorable brave thing and wait till Cassius Clay is bedridden with typhoid fever so they know he isn't going to show oh up. Oh my show god. Up at night and burn the place to the ground because they're a bunch of fucking bitches. Now, Cassius Clay recovers from typhoid fever. He reestablishes oh, the newspaper. Oh, that is rough. Ohio, which is an anti-slavery stronghold. The only problem with that is being an anti-slavery stronghold, there's not going to be any conflict and that's fucking boring, so Cassius Clay moves on to another <laughs> life adventure, volunteering in the Mexican-American War. While serving in the Mexican-American War, he would be a captain leading a group of Kentucky soldiers, and they would be captured pretty much immediately, and he would spend the duration of the entire war as a POW. POW? What the hell is that? And, like, this guy has a really interesting life. Like, you know, we look at our lives and we're like, so what did you do? Well, you know, I studied a bit, I traveled a bit, like, I got a job, and then I just, like, I have my 9 to 5 at the same office for, like, 20 years, and, yeah, you know, uneventful. This guy is, like, constantly, bam, 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 we're moving here, we're doing that, we're, like, inventing shit, we're guns a-blazing. Prisoner of war? Okay, okay. Thanks, chat. While serving as a POW, some of the men under his command would escape, meaning that the Mexican military was then going to put the rest of his unit to death. Cassius Clay said, hey, don't kill my men. Just kill me and my other fellow officers. We're the ones in charge. It's our fault that those men escaped. It's our responsibility. Please let the lower enlisted men go home. The Mexican military was so Why impressed would they by do this that? that they decided to spare everyone. Huh? Excuse you? They, they're impressed and they just let everyone go? Bruh. This has to be fiction at this point. There ain't no way that someone would just let him go and be like, oh yeah, this guy's honorable, like totally, we should, we should spare him in a war. Just, uh, you know what? 
including Cassius yeah. Clay, and he would return home a war hero. Returning home a war hero? He didn't really know what to do, so he starts giving his famous speeches again, this time leveraging his newfound title as a war hero. So obviously, oh my take God. To piss off, he faces yet another assassination attempt. This of course. Time, six brothers from a wealthy slave-owning family show up, the Turner brothers. They show up with clubs and knives and guns, and they beat the living shit out of Cassius Clay with the clubs. They stabbed him multiple times. Cassius Clay whips out his trusted Bowie knife, starts opening up these brothers like they're fucking Amazon pack. Uh, what happened to just dual gunslinger mode? Like, why, why did he even wait on, like, maybe they ambushed him, I guess. Like, just making his way to the lead brother and stabbing him an excessive amount of times. We don't know how many times, but we do know it was a lifetime supply. Killing the lead brother. <laughs> lifetime supply. Cassius Clay Jesus. Would fall to the ground, nearly dead. And this would be the closest anybody ever came to actually killing Cassius Clay. When he was asked about it later on in life, all he said was, I felt the utmost indignation, which translates to, I was fucking annoyed. This man almost died from an assassination. <laughs> utmost attempt, and indignation. He has the same let's go. It that I have towards fucking fruit flies, okay? This dude is so metal, he deserves his own spot on the periodic table of elements. Cassius Clay, he sounds really metal, honestly. Giving his speeches again. Gangsta AF. A large chunk of his land to John Fee, who uses it to found Berea College, the first co educational and multiracial college in the South ever. Fast forward to 1860, mm -hmm. Cassius Clay is giving speeches in Illinois where he meets a politician by the name of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and they get along <laughs> great. Cassius Clay is then slotted to become Abraham Lincoln's I vice president. I love the Senate thing. Cassius Clay to be an actual big name politician like that. So they give the job to Hannibal Hamlin and Cassius Clay becomes the ambassador to... <laughs> I like how he, like, he's a bit too Cassius Clay. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to kind of get that. The vibe of Cassius Clay. Russia. 1861 rolls around the Civil War. Have a good night, Cassius Clay is in Russia. Cassius Clay not only convinces Russia. Russia to not side with the Confederates, but he convinces Russia to tell Great Britain and France that if they so much as recognize the Confederacy, Russia will go to war with them. And this was a humongous step that nobody talks about in the winning of the Civil War. And it is 100% because of Cassius Clay. Fast forward to 1862. Abraham okay. Lincoln will appoint Clay a major general in the Union Army. Cassius Clay publicly refuses the President of the United States, saying that he's not going to do it until the President signs the Emancipation Proclamation freeing the slaves of the South. Cassius Clay oh, is literally Jesus the man Christ. that bullied Abraham Lincoln into prematurely signing the Emancipation Proclamation Prematurely. And nobody talks about it. Fast forward again to 1865, the Union wins the Great America. Cassius Clay and you're just there going like, you either sign it or the gun. <laughs> I will slap that gun straight in your mouth, Mr. President. And I don't care because my name is Cassius Clay and I'm gangster AF. <laughs> Dude, this story sounds way too crazy. It makes me think that either there are multiple Cassius Clays or like this is really and exaggerated. This is insane. Cassius Clay achieved his lifelong goal at the age of 55, bringing an end to slavery in the United States of America. He then goes back to Russia again to serve as ambassador until 1869. And while he is there, he helps to broker the purchase of Alaska. This man is probably the most influential person in American history that you've never heard of. After returning, I have Russia, never heard Cassius of him. That was right. His days in Whitehall until the age of 80 years old, where he would be declared clinically insane in hindsight site most likely due to a severe amount of PTSD. Clearly <laughs> insane. I'm like, bro, that's his diagnosis ever since he started on the path of war. <laughs> but sure, he left to 80 years old after after he was. You can see the name at the top over here. Uh, after he was like beaten, trashed, uh, almost killed, stabbed. Uh, death threats non-stop, having typhoid fever, and like, this man went through war, being a prisoner, insanity, and lived to 80 years old, and uh, yeah as well as potentially dementia. Uh, he didn't die from it. He lived on for quite a bit longer. He just picked up a new hobby of fucking with the local sheriff because he was <laughs> crazy now. Over the course of the next decade... <laughs> with the sheriff because he's crazy <laughs> I, <laughs> I cannot this is hilarious
<laughs> oh, God. The play and the sheriff would have multiple run-ins that would be concluded when the sheriff and seven deputies were repelled <sighs> from Whitehall when Clay utilized his home defense cannon that he had at the top of his stairwell. At that point, the local Excuse sheriff would you? inform the local judge he will not be returning to Whitehall to tangle with Cassius Clay anymore unless the judge was willing to dispatch an entire company of the local militia to accommodate Excuse him. you? Then in 1900, two men would yeah, break the into Whitehall and Cassius Clay at the age of 89 would manage to kill both of them, one by gunshot and one yet again with his trusted bow. <laughs> then in 1903, God at the age of 92, Cassius Clay would die of natural Natural causes, or as they called it back then, general exhaustion, which is the general most way on the planet. General exhaustion. To go just, I'm tired now. Peace. And then he left. <laughs> I'm tired. Think I'll go home now. In conclusion, when it comes to famous historical household names, there's. <laughs> that is so badass. This is like, yeah, I'm done with this shit. Time to respawn. Bye, guys. <laughs> oh. There's always another man or woman lurking behind the scenes in the shadows that's deemed too rough around the edges to be in the spotlight. He died at 92 just as much, years old, excellent. Movement. These men and women are willing to do horrific things for terrific reasons. And when it came to Abraham Lincoln and the abolition of slavery, that man's name was Cassius Marcellus Clay, the most gangster politician in American history. Thanks for watching the video. Best that is channels. Go by crazy, honestly. Like, Quack bang. It, you, you hear the story and you're like, there's no way this is true, but yet it's crazy enough for like these points that it, it might actually be true. I don't know how much of it and how much is just, you know, the, the winners write the history, but goddamn, I do agree. That is the most gangster politician ever because uh, that story is insane. <laughs> That story is insane. That guy had one heck of a life and he lived to 92. Damn. I still, I, I, my favorite part of this entire thing has to be the part where he's like, he has dementia, so he's like, you know, he's insane, so he's fucking with the sheriff. <laughs> That's probably my favorite part of this entire thing. Well done. Absolutely amazing.